Will you stand and sing with us, please? I'm casting my cares aside. I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Today is the day. I'm putting my fears aside, I'm leaving my doubts behind, I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hand to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Today is the day. stand upon your truth all my days i'll live for you all my days i'll live for you and i will stand upon your truth i will stand upon your truth all my days i'll live for you all my days i'll live for you Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm giving you my fears and sorrows. Where you lead me, I will follow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. 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 Amen and amen. Will you continue to remain standing as we continue on with our worship? Now unto the King who reigns over all and never changes or turns unfailing justice unfading grace whose promises remain yes your promises remain now unto the king 
to the King who reigns over all and never changes or turns. Unfailing justice, unfading grace, His promises remain. Yes, your promises remain. The heavens reign, the saints all sing, great is your faithfulness. From age to age we will proclaim, great is your faithfulness. How great is your faithfulness. Everything changes, but you stay the same. Your word and kingdom endures. We lean on the promise of all that you are and trust forevermore. We will trust forevermore. The heavens ring, the saints all sing. Great is your faithfulness. From age to age we will proclaim. Great is your faithfulness. The heavens ring, the saints all sing. Great is your faithfulness. From age to age we will proclaim. Great is your faithfulness. How great is your faithfulness. From generation to generation, you never failed us, O oh God. Yesterday and today and tomorrow, until the day you return. The heavens ring. The saints all sing, great is your faithfulness. From age to age we will proclaim, great is your faithfulness. The heavens ring, the saints all sing, great is your faithfulness. From age to age we will proclaim, Great is your faithfulness. How great is your faithfulness. How great is your faithfulness. How great let us pray together God like the Israelites in the wilderness we too have known your love and experienced your care and provision you invite us to extend that love to the world around us to care for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. And so we bring the needs of our world and our community before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep warm, enough employment or money to pay their bills, enough medicine or medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have more than enough, but who still struggle to find meaning and purpose in life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as if heaven was here on earth working together with one heart and mind, strengthen us to live in a manner worthy of the good news that we have received. 
offering our lives in service of your kingdom where the last are first and the first are last. And there is grace enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we experience your faithfulness to us, we share together in the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let go of every single dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I've tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, King of the fight, no matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust. I will trust in you. Truth is you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So when all things be my life and breath, I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move those mountains, I needed you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. strength and comfort. You are my steady head. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher. Your plans are always good. There's not a place where I'll go. You have already stood. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Amen. Thank you so much, Angie. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let me also extend a warm welcome and greeting to you this morning. We are thrilled that you are joining us for worship here. It is pumpkin season, hence the pallets that are out in front of you. We'll see if the weather holds. We were, Paige and I were discussing this morning, we've only worshiped with empty pallets in the pumpkin patch. So hopefully next week the pumpkin, well, the pumpkins will be here, but hopefully next week the weather will also be great and we'll be able to worship in the patch. 
So I'd like for you to take a moment. If you will look on the inside cover of your bulletin, you will see a QR code there. I hope that you will take some time at some point during the rest of our worship using your phone to uh, scan that with the camera app and register your attendance with us this morning. Uh, we would love to hear from every single one of you. Today we continue our At the Movies worship series. Uh, Pastor Wendy, Reverend Wendy, is going to be sharing with us as we examine and look at the movie Patch Adams and the question, does everything happen for a reason? I do not envy her this morning as she sh she's going to share with us in just a little bit. I have a few announcements for you. As I said, it is pumpkin season. So at two o'clock today, you've got enough time. You've got your work. You'll have your worship done. You'll be able to go home, get a nice lunch, maybe even a nap, and then come back here at two o'clock. And Mr. Galoni will be done spreading the big bins of pumpkins out, and we will be ready to place them on the pallet. So two o'clock today. We look forward to seeing you back here. October 1st is this weekend, which means all of our pumpkin events uh, kick off on this Friday. So the pumpkin patch will be open. Our movies in the patch will start. We're going to have yoga in the patch, paint in the patch, all kinds of exciting things going on in the month of October. The movie this coming Friday is Charlie Brown, Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, and Hotel Transylvania will be the movies this weekend. One little housekeeping thing. Since we won't have the pumpkins until 2 o'clock today, as you move around worship at the end and as you go and see somebody, please, please, please go ahead and get the extra steps in and walk around the pallets and avoid walking and standing on them. So we are here to celebrate and worship the faithfulness of God, even in the hardest moments of life. And so we are grateful for your faithfulness to Jamestown United Methodist Church in the ways that you give of your time and of your offering and of your tithes. So let us pray for our offering this morning. Holy God, may these tithes, these gifts, these offerings be used for the building up of your kingdom here and around the world. And may they be used to show your faithfulness and your presence here amongst us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 15 through 20. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call heaven and earth as witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give you, give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I went on a family vacation with my in-laws to the beach and my husband, Josh, his uh, aunt and uncle have a little boy who is almost four years old. And so for the entire week, uh, we would hear his parents tell him what he should and should not be doing. Wesley, don't open that door. Wesley, get downstairs now. Wesley, it's time to go to bed. And after every command that he was given by his parents, he would ask, 
why yes it's like you guys have heard this before why why do i have to go downstairs why can't i open that door you know i'm sure that i was a lot like wesley as a child asking the question why because as an adult i always want to know why there has to be reasons behind a decision logic behind decision right why are you choosing to change this? Or why did you choose to do it this way? I'm just curious. I'm sure David is so tired of me hearing me say, David, I'm just curious, but why did you decide to do this? <laughs> As a child, I would say because I said so was not a sufficient answer for me. I would always look at my parents confused, like, okay, so what's the answer? <laughs> Now, I'm sure that I am not alone in asking this question, that many of you do the same thing. We want to make sense of the things that are happening around us. After all, God gave us a brain. God gave us a conscience to think, reason, and question. God did not create us as robots just to do what, we are program pro to what he programmed us to do. And we're not puppets that the master sits up there and pulls on strings. That God designed us to be curious beings who explore, who doubt, who question. We want to know why. But what happens when there doesn't seem to be an answer to our questions? Especially when it comes to suffering, tragedy, and loss. We, like Patch Adams in that scene, ask why when we see suffering or when we go undergo suffering. Why, God? Why did this have to happen? A few years ago, I was visiting with a family of an 18-year-old girl who had died in a house fire. And I was telling her grandmother how sorry I was for her loss and what a tragedy it was. And it was so sad that her granddaughter had to had died so young. And the grandmother said to me, you know, Pastor Wendy, everything happens for a reason. I trust that God had a reason to take her from us. Everything happens for a reason. I'm sure most of us have heard someone say this at some point, may have said it to us, or at some point we may have said it to someone else, hoping to encourage and comfort them. When someone dies unexpectedly, we say things like, it must have been their time, or it must have been part of the plan, or it must have been God's will. You know, I think we say these things because it's our, in our attempt to answer the question of, why? Why, God? We want to make sense of a senseless tragedy. We want to bring order to the chaos around us. We want reason and logic to take the place of the confusion and the pain that comes with loss. In a world that seems so out of control, we find it comforting to imagine that every detail of our life is controlled by the plan and will of God. One of my professors in divinity school, Dr. Kate Bowler, actually wrote a book called Everything Happens for a Reason. Many of you have probably heard of it. It was on the New York Times bestseller list, and some of you might have read it. In the book, she chronicles her journey of being diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at the age of 35. I was in her American Christianity class in my second year of divinity school, and at the time, she was pregnant with her son. She finished out the semester and then on maternity leave, and a few months later, we received an email from the dean saying, telling us about Dr. Bowler's diagnosis. And I remember thinking how tragic it was. She was so young. She just had a little boy. How is this little boy going to grow up without his mother? She had so much life left to give. She's a gifted author and teacher. She's at seminary forming young, the minds and hearts of young pastors. Why, God? Why, Kate? In her book, Kate details her journey, her own journey, as she faces this question. 
and she gets answers from a lot of people. I guess when you're a best-selling author, you get a lot of unsolicited <laughs> advice from folks. She writes in her book that most everyone I meet is dying to make me certain. They want me to know without a doubt that there is a hidden logic to seeming chaos. One of her neighbors came to bring her and her husband a meal and told Kate's husband that, you know, everything happens for a reason, to which he responded, I would love to hear the reason why my wife is dying. Another person emailed her and told her uh, that it was all part of, a, of God's plan, that she could be an example to others who are dying, that she has a platform to use her voice and she could inspire thousands of people, and that is why God had given her colon cancer. Another person wrote a letter to her saying that uh, some people might think it's cruel for God to let you die so young. But the answer is simple and crystal clear. God is a just God to let you die. This is the consequence of your sin. We all want, the, want to answer the question of why in the face of our suffering. But sometimes we so focus so much on trying to answer the question, trying to find the solution that our answers can lead to conclusions about God that are simply untrue. And rather than bringing in comfort to someone, they can push them away from God. For example, when we say that suffering is all part of God's plan, we are essentially telling folks that God is a God who brings suffering upon his people. That pain, grief, Fear and hopelessness are all from God. Now, this view of God is very much against what we see in Scripture. In Scripture, we see a God who comforts us and loves us. Psalm 103 tells us, praises God as the one who forgives all of our sins, who heals our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires for good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteous and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love. That is the God who is with us in our suffering, not the God who causes our suffering. When we say everything happens for a reason, we are also prioritizing God's sovereignty over our own actions and freedoms. Put simply, we are saying that God controls every aspect of our lives, including our choices. If that's the case, and this makes God, we're just God's puppets, right? We have no control over our lives, nor the freedom to make choices. It also eliminates any personal responsibility we have for our choices. So the 18-year-old who died in that house fire, whether she had wanted to get out alive or not, she couldn't have because it was God's plan that she die in the house fire. She didn't have a choice by that logic. We overemphasize God's sovereignty at the expense of human freedom and human choice. As Christians, we believe that God is a sovereign God, but at the same time, God gives us freedom to make our own choices. Scripture is full of stories in which humans make choices. Some are good choices, others are not so good choices. And we see in Scripture, God spent a lot of time cleaning up choices that we made that were not so good. The Bible opens with a story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And what does God do? He gives them a choice, right? They can eat or not eat from the tree of life. They can choose the path that God has set before them, or they can choose their own path. It's their choice. And in our scripture passage today, we see Moses reminding the people of Israel that they have a choice. 
they are preparing to enter the promised land. Finally, they've been roaming around in the, de in the wilderness for years. And at this point, they're standing on the brink of the promised land, and Moses is reminding them that they have a choice. God has already given them the Ten Commandments and the law. And Moses tells them, you have a choice. You can choose to follow God. You can take a path that leads to life, or you can take your own path that leads to death. One path involves a choice to obey and to love God, loving the neighbor, doing God's will in the world. And the other path, the other choice is to live for ourselves without regard to God or anybody else. We have a choice. God gives us a choice. We're not just puppets on a string to do whatever God commands us to do. God has shown us what is good and what is required of us, but he also gives us freedom to walk in his path or away from it. This means that our choices can be good for others and good for ourselves, or they can hurt others and hurt ourselves. But God doesn't set everything in motion and say, all right, guys, you're on your own. Make your choices. I told you what's good and what not to do. I'm out of here. We also believe that God is with us in the midst of it, that God's not a hands-off God, that we have the Holy Spirit within us that is always prompting us and nudging us towards the goodness of God, towards the path that God has for us. The Holy Spirit is always working in and through us as we live this life. And we can't deny that God is still at work here because we see God work in miraculous ways. Things happen that are unexplained that could only be the miraculous work of God. So does everything happen for a reason? My answer <laughs> is no. We can get so consumed in trying to answer the que why question in the midst of our suffering that we miss seeing God in the midst of our suffering. We focus so much on the solution that we don't embrace the pain that accompanies suffering. And when we can't embrace the pain, we struggle to feel the embrace of God. <clears throat> During difficult seasons of my life, I've been lucky enough to have counseling available to me. Now, each counselor has always emphasized the importance of sitting in the presence, being in the present, Wendy, sitting in the pain. You know, and I'm, when I'm in the midst of a painful season, I want to avoid the pain and all the emotions that come with the suffering, but it's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too overwhelming. What if I break? I want to move on with my life. I want to move forward. I want to get out of the pit. I want to be done. But the counselors have always encouraged me, Wendy, sit with the pain. Don't run from it. And those of you who have sat in the pit that sit with your pain, you know that this is hard work. It's not easy. It is work sitting with your pain, sitting in the suffering. But when I do sit with the pain, I am able to see that I am not alone in that pit, that God is with me there. In every tear, in every angry rant, God is with me. And it is there in that pit when I am broken wide open that I experience the fullness of God's love. It is there that I truly feel God's presence and God meets me there. Dr. Bowler, she said that at the time when she heard about her cancer diagnosis, she should have felt abandoned by God. 
yet she was not reduced to ashes. Instead, she felt like she was floating on the love of God in the midst of one of the most difficult and painful seasons of her life. Now, each of us here have our own stories of pain, suffering, loss, and tragedy. We all of us here know what it, what it is to sit in the pit of pain. Last year, Josh and I shared with you guys about our painful journey of infertility. We tried to conceive a child for five years, and after about three years with multiple failed infertility treatments, we felt like we were in the pit. We could no longer pray for a child. It became too bitter to pray. And we felt like God was not hearing our petitions, was not hearing our cries. And we begin to ask ourselves, why is this happening to us? We wanted answers. We felt like God wasn't giving us any answers. There had to be a reason, right? There had to be a reason why we weren't getting pregnant. Was it because of sins we had committed in the past? Did God think that we would be bad parents? Was it just not part of God's plan? All of these questions and these thoughts ran through our minds. And the irony of it all is that we're two pastors. We're both theologically trained. We don't believe that everything happens for a reason. And here we are going, God, give us a reason. <laughs> Why are we in this pit? Why can we not get pregnant? And as we ask why, we became more angry and bitter, and we began to move further and further away from God. We blamed God. And it wasn't until I met with a colleague in ministry, and she reminded me that God was with Josh and I in the pain and in the questions that the desire to have a child was placed in our hearts by God, that it was a good and beautiful desire, that we hadn't done anything wrong, that the Lord wept with us each month when once again I wasn't pregnant. God wasn't withholding this desire from us. God wasn't punishing us. We were reminded that life is not perfect, that this world is not perfect, that our bodies aren't perfect, that our reproductive systems aren't perfect. And that's okay. That is okay that it's not all perfect because that is the world that we live in. We live in a world that is wonderful and broken all at the same time. I can't reconcile why the world is jolted by events that are wonderful and terrible, that are gorgeous and tragic. We live in a Good Friday world that crucifies a king, yet we also live in an Easter Sunday world in which the dead are raised to life. Life is so beautiful at the same time that life is so hard. But in it all, in the beautiful and in the tragic, God is with us. God does not abandon us, but sits with us in it all. Amen. Our closing song today is one that we have not done in this service. Um, Mark and I actually sang it as a duet during the pandemic when we were recording things like crazy. Um, it's pretty easy to sing along with once you hear it one time. But also, if it's one of those songs where you just need to sit or stand and let the words wash over you, please allow it to do so. Please stand.
now into this beautiful and this broken world and tell them how much God is with them in all the beauty and in all the tragedy that they are not alone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen